Hello everyone, and welcome back to a new episode of Prismata. We are in the queue, and I looked a minute ago, no games live, but we've got one, so... 358. I've, I've, I saw this person for the first time, like, yesterday maybe, on stream or something? I think? I don't remember who they were playing against. Um... Hmm. I mean... Bloodphage seems like the main thing here, with Galvani making... You can't exactly open 1-1-A one, one and then go Phages. Which kind of stinks. Player 2 has a pretty strong opening, though, don't they? Of, like, turn 2 D1-A into Phage Tarsier. Yeah, that's pretty good, right? That's the usual. But, um, I believe with Mobile Animus I should be able to do, like, D1-2 next turn. And then Phage. Seems alright. Alright, just buy Phage for a turn or two, and then do something else. Maybe it's one Phage and then like, Rhino and try to get a Forge or something? I don't really, I mean Manticore doesn't look playable, and I don't really think there's gonna be time to get Valk, so this kind of looks like just like, <sighs> red-blue with Phage. I don't know, maybe red-green. Yeah, I mean this is the obvious player 2 line here. I'm hopeful that this this is like mm, this is the standard player two line for like blood phage galvani and i'm hopeful that like normally that's quite good for player two and player one has a bit of a tough time i'm hopeful that the mobile animus lets me like i get to attack first into that which is something player one usually doesn't have the uh a great plan for so i'm hopeful that adding in the mobile animus into the existing plan will work well. Um, so let's see, next turn I sort of expect opponent to build Phage, but if they do, they're losing NG. Like, they could build Rhino, I think that's pretty bad. Phage is also not amazing, so... Oh yeah, they won't build Rhino because I could just kill Galvani if they did. Likewise, I shouldn't build Rhino because they'll kill my Galvani. So next turn... I'll have 13 bucks, which, assuming I don't click Phage, right? Which is, um, like, exactly Phage Forge, which seems pretty cool. So I don't think I should spend this two bucks on an NG or anything. I could do that if I wanted to get, like, Phage Drone Drone, but I don't. Also, I couldn't afford that. Yeah. Or Phage, Phage Single Drone, I could do, right, with 13 bucks. I could buy Phage Drone and that last energy. Yeah, so, like, I could do that, but I think that getting the Forge is more important. Than, uh, getting another drone. So I don't want to actually build a wall here, because they would just um, hold Rhino and click Galvani. So instead I'm going to build, like, something else. I don't know. Rhino, probably, to Gambit, and then Splitter if NG. Can't buy NG. 
So against this, they'll click Rhino and kill NG, which is not great. Um, could build wall, but then they hold Rhino and click Galvani, also not great. So I think this is the better approach. Mm, what if I did something crazy like that? <laughs> I don't think that's great, but it's interesting. It means that they can't easily turn off my Galvani. I lose access to red. But I keep the Galvani going. And I can buy back some tech next turn, maybe? Like a Conduit or something is better than an Animus at this stage, I think. Just buy another NG because why not? And then I can get like Wall, Conduit, and a Galvani or something. Yeah, I can barely afford wall conduit with Galani, but it seems good. I'm on four attack and they're on two-ish. That's why they're having to squeeze out that Tarsier. Uh, I could get a wall, but that just gives them license to kill this Galvani. On the other hand, I also don't want to like not buy any attacker. I could hold the Rhino, I guess. That's a bit problematic, but I mean, it's not outrageous. What if I got Mobile Animus instead of Conduit? Buy it back? It doesn't seem so great. Yeah, I want Force Fields. Okay, they're finally gonna have enough attack that a wall is getting value, and... Well, I don't know, are they? They could hold the Rhino again and just attack for two. Alright, there's three. Now a wall is good value and I can start attacking with the Rhino. I'm starting to think this kind of really should have been uh, a mobile animus because I don't really want to spend my I don't want to spend my green at the moment I could just buy this it's sort of a $3 drone that's a bit more flexible a $4 drone I mean which is not great but I don't think it's very good in fact. And four is a quite awkward amount to attack for for them, so I'm happy with that.
This, this rhino has been kind of weird. You don't usually buy a rhino to act as your main defender, but... I think it's been good so far. <clears throat> I wish I had my red back. <laughs> but, I don't know, it was pretty cool to get that rhino and still keep the Galvani going. So I don't exactly regret selling my mobile animus. Oh, I really want to buy a Gauss Cannon, but if I do, my Yalvani turns off when they attack with everything. And so I think it may be better to not do that. Can this pressure them into not attacking for everything? I don't think it can. Get some extra soak so that next turn I can buy like wall, gala, wall, gauss cannon, and maybe a galvani or something. I don't think this game's going well. Losing access to my red is a big, big bummer. I feel like it's too late for Tarsiers. But they're getting good value out of their their rhinos. Ooh. Could just do this? Well not quite, huh? Because this turns off all my Galvanis. This keeps it on, I guess. I'm a bit more breach proof, is another thing, like. I don't have these Tarsiers, which is kind of nice. If it comes down to a tiebreaker, or rather, if it comes down to like a very close game where we're both getting breached, I win that tiebreaker. Here, I think it might be okay to offer a Gambit if I had to, because they really don't want to absorb onto Rhino and sack all the walls. But, you know, actually maybe they do want to do that. Okay, so... This is... This is a gambit I can offer, is like, if they want to absorb onto Rhino to turn off one of my Galvanis, I'm okay with that. have this uh, opportunity again, but I can just buy another NG, like why not, right? Um, the other thing is maybe something I could do involving holding a splitter. I don't know, I could buy another splitter, but why not just buy a wall instead?
wall supplies, by the way? I'm ahead. Shouldn't you click that rhino? I really think you should. You'll actually be able to soak with it next turn if you do that. And I don't understand this gambit. Like, are you really... I don't know. I don't get it. I don't think that was correct. Hmm, that's probably incorrect. Uh, I guess, well, hmm. If they clicked it, they'd be soaking with their two stamina rhino. But I still think that would be better. Yeah, I again can't really do this. Are we both like kind of stable here? I think we are. I think that's what opponent is showing me is that that I can't just do that. Okay, this though is more promising. I got it to add some actual attack. Okay, now I'm doing eight damage, right? There five, so they're they're like exactly cycling quite well. I need to do something because I'm running out of NG supply if I just continue that cycle. Also, my drones are getting force fielded away gradually. Another problem with that line. I don't know, I'm kind of like stuck here. I just have to keep doing this and hope it wins. That's a bit greedy, isn't it? Oh, really? Was I winning? It's news to me. Very, very close in like all these graphs at all times. Was I actually winning? Why was I winning? I guess I should have opened analyze mode instead, but... So, like, let's say this is the plan I was considering. I don't know about this Galvani, but it's a thing I could consider. Okay, those are some scary noises to hear, huh? I see. So they have to hold this back. And they're just like not attacking for enough to actually punish all these crazy Galvanis. Do I even need this force field? Hang on. Yeah, just to keep more Galvanis going, it's probably good, right? Honestly, I think I could even buy another Galvani, right? Because they're only killing two NGs? Yeah. Huh. And then from here, like, they have no walls, they have no rhinos. I'm clearly winning. I don't really know why. <laughs> this, is, it's just, this is kind of a funny end position. I have six Galvanis and two drones. I don't know how that happened. I just sort of kept buying Galvanis and it kept being reasonable, so I went back and bought more. But I didn't really plan on that being the, uh, anything like that being the end position. So, okay, this was an interesting play. Was this actually good? 
I didn't really think too hard about it. Like, this is what I want to do, right? But I'm a dollar short. And so I bought a rhino for five and a red, which is sort of the same cost as six, right? So when you have blood phage, I could always convert. So instead, I bought a rhino for three and paying roughly, sort of, I lost access to mobile animus, which you, you know, it's sort of worth four. But not exactly. So I, I kind of bought a $7 Rhino instead of a $6 Rhino. But in exchange, I got to buy another NG. And really, I got two NG. Like, I got an extra NG and some defensive tempo. Um, and like, whether, whether to value mobile animus that you've already bought at four is unclear. Um, it was worth four when I bought it, but was, is it worth four now? I'm not sure. So I think this actually was kind of cool. Um, get a couple blood phages just because they're like good attackers. That they made my opponent's life a bit awkward. And then switch out of red into green for force fields. I kind of like that. And also, like... Was I right to never build a wall? I think so. Or not never, but to take a long time before building a wall. I think so, because like, okay, yes, my opponent was getting in damage that I could have prevented, but all that really does is give them the Rhino defensive tempo sooner. It's not damage that I would have absorbed otherwise. They would have just held the Rhino as I was doing with this Rhino. Um, what was that I thought of building? Oh, getting back to mobile animus, yeah. And they, they kept being exploitable. Like this Rhino, he was amazing. He never attacked, but he always threatened to attack. And then here, they finally gave him a reason to attack, so... As well as a reason for me to build a wall. So it was kind of perfect to jump in there. And also, this was the turn where I had two green, so I could, like, actually make use of the force fields to build attackers. Because, like, if you only have a blue and a green, it's sort of hard to use your force field to build an attacker. Right, the, the point... The reason you get a force fields, or get a conduit sort of early for force fields, is to let you keep building attackers for longer. Um, in the late game, like you, you build force fields to keep yourself from losing, like to keep yourself from being overrun. Um, but in the mid game, force fields can let you build defense very cheaply. Uh, allowing you to build more attackers, right? You sell your drones, which are inefficient units, to buy a to, to give you the defensive tempo to allow you to buy attackers, which are efficient units, instead of keeping your drones and like buying walls. Um, and you can't do that when you just have like your whole tech for the turn is a blue and a green, right? Like, how was I supposed to force field to let myself buy more attackers here? I can't. I've already bought all the attackers I can. Um, you know, I could cut the NG and the drone for Gauss Cannon, but that's not using the force field, and, like, I kind of needed the NG. Um, so here I finally had two green and was able to actually make use of that. Uh, I guess I sort of built the Rhino. Yeah, yeah. I built the force field, which allowed me to click the Rhino, but I really wanted to do that regardless, so I don't know. But it let me get out the Gauss Cannon is sort of the point. And I'm not really sure <sighs> there was a point during the game at which I felt like I was in a losing cycle. And I, I did some stuff that broke out of it, but I wanted to go back and see if that was actually 
the case. But also, like, this is just such a funny, I don't know, funny way to use Galvani's is the engineers sort of play against the threat of opponents' rhinos, and by like building force field NG Galvani all on a single turn, I'm sort of paying like six in a green to uh, gain three defensive tempo, kind of? Not exactly. Um, you can th you can think of, and I've talked about this in previous videos, NG plus Galvani as a pair of units that is a lot like a vigilant drone. A drone that you can hold for defense and still harvest on the same turn. Um, this is only possible, this is only like good when opponent can't deny you absorb by clicking Galvani. Um, Cause if they can, it's not a drone that like actually give you gives you defensive value. They just get to like kill it for free. Um, but when they when they have to deal the damage to your actual blockers, or or when they have to give you your full absorb value, they don't really want to click Galvani. And so the engineer is kind of like a drone that is being held for defense, but still gathering money. And so paying six no, five in a green, right? One, three, four. How can I? Okay. Galvani. NG is three. Force field is four. Yeah, it's four and a green. To convert one of your drones into this frontline drone that we're sort of imagining. The, the vigilant drone, rather. Um, and you also get a force field out of it. So it's sort of like four and a green for three defensive tempo, kind of? That doesn't cost a drone, in a way? I don't know. And it just seemed like, because I was thinking about the breach-proof future, or not the breach-proof, but like, remember I mentioned the opponent has these Tarsiers and like the tiebreaker in this game may well be which one of us is more breach vulnerable. Um, and drones, are more breach vulnerable than NG Galvani pairs. Because the NG Galvani pairs still get money on the turn that you defend with them. And you can hold them to defend against threat and still get money with them. And then if the opponent doesn't cash in on the threat, you don't lose the NG. So it just sort of seemed like I kept being in a spot where I wanted to force field anyway, and I was going to get value from a largest number of Galvanis and I wanted engineers, and all of that sort of pushed me towards more of the tie-breaking, mm, the tie-breaker winningness position I was talking about. Of like, my attackers have three, you know, they're not all like, you, you don't want blood phages to get breached for sure, um, but they're less breach vulnerable than Tarsiers. Um, and Steel Splitters also allow you to delay the Breach quite a bit by holding them to defend. So I'm, I'm ahead on that as well. And I, like I said, I, I wasn't really like explicitly planning on it, but the converting all these drones to Vigilant drones was advancing my potential win condition of winning the Breach-proof endgame. Or the Mutual Breach endgame. And when was it that I realized, like, I think it was around here. I was like, wait a minute. I'm attacking for eight every turn. What is that killing? Wall, NG, Rhino. Right? Um, and can't opponent keep doing that forever, I thought to myself? First of all, they can't, so I don't know why I thought they could. They only... Oh, yeah, yeah, they can. Right. They'll have one red if they click, yeah, so the click phage and Galvani giving them 12 bucks, they build wall, NG, Rhino, right? They're stable. Meanwhile, like, what's happening to me? I'm losing drones, it seems, by force fielding every turn. 
But actually, I like, I kind of am not losing drones because I'm, I'm converting them to Galvani's instead. So I don't know. Maybe, maybe I didn't need to push so hard to break the tie or break the cycle. But getting that, that last Gauss Cannon made them start holding drones, which really accelerated the decline. And somehow, like, all the Galvanis stayed online. Kind of cool. And then we get this nice little exploit here. Not that it super matters, like, the Galvanis never harvesting again, so... Killing it for free is kind of uninteresting. Maybe it would have been better, in fact, to leave the Galvani alive and hold a splitter instead. To give myself the defensive tempo to, like, I don't know, buy another Gauss Cannon or something. Or a splitter. I don't know. It, something something feels wrong about this game, like, that I got... This doesn't seem like how Galvani endgames are supposed to go. You're not supposed to have five Galvani drones. But... Opponent can't really punish. They could, like, click all my Galvanis, but then I don't lose any of this stuff, and I can just spend my three dollars on buying more Galvanis, I guess. Four dollars, I guess, on buying more Galvanis. I don't know. Anyway, like, they they can't really stand up under the pressure of this attack. Um, and they can't, can't do enough to... To punch through all these steel splitters, much less like all the... They, they can't punch through the front line of defenders I actually have, much less the steel splitters that I have in reserve, so... Hmm. I don't know, like, was this really... I mean, I guess we looked at analysis mode, and I think this was actually the right number of NGs and Galvanis to get. Like, it seems kind of silly, but... I just lose one NG and sort of fine. Oh yeah. And like this happens to them. Oh. I guess I forgot to hold something. I don't know. Whatever. Okay. Cool. Well, uh, anything else to say about this game? Yes. It's So people sometimes ask me why do I play base plus 5 when it's so boring. Uh and so there are many sets where player 1 obviously wins or player 2 obviously wins. Um and so I have, I have a few answers to that, one of which is like, look, I just get in both queues, and if there's people who are only queuing base plus five, like, I run into them. Um, another is like, I don't like base plus 11. Uh, if I could play more base plus seven, I'd be thrilled, but there's no way to do that. Um, base plus five is uncomplicated, but I do like finding how I feel like base plus five is more about execution of a line and less about finding rock, paper, scissors solutions, right? Like A beats C beats, or A, A is better than B, B is better than C, C is better than A, find some way to not commit to anything until your opponent does and then, and then you know, whatever. Um, whereas here, like, I think it's pretty clear to everyone that Bloodphage is the winner. Uh, and so it's about finding a way to execute that well. Uh, which is a nice challenge, a nice little puzzle. Um, and I, I don't think it's really like, you know, you look at this and you say, oh yeah, boring, Phage plus MOBA plus Galvani, like easy opening, resident sleeper, whatever. Um, but. Like, a lot of weird and interesting things happened in this game. Like, right? Clicking the mobile animus to make this tactical play of getting out some faster attack and defending with Rhino instead of wall. That was cool. 
um, some good tactical exploits against their Galvani and this weird development of galvanifying all of my drones. A lot of neat stuff happened this game, right? I don't think that because this was base plus five, it was totally boring and predetermined. Um, I think player skill mattered a lot. I don't know, I mean, that's sort of me saying, LOL, three, five, eight, I'm a better player than you, but I don't know, I, I, don't, I don't mean that. I, I just mean like, we each had a lot of interesting decisions to make. Um, even if the units around which we base our plan are like, I mean, this was really base plus three, right? Um, there's not that many choices of what to use, but how to use them was still was still interesting and developed into a lot of a number of cool situations that I don't see very often. So that's another reason to play base plus five. <laughs> I don't mean to say that like this only occurs in base plus five, but rather like this this kind of stuff, which I'm sure occurs in base plus eight all the time. Like it also occurs in base plus five, just because there's a small number of units doesn't mean there's a small number of decisions, of choices, of cool plays. Right, recognizing the like red into, and then like later green, you know, that was cool. I liked it. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this as well. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.